Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, got a little bit of something, something we're going to play for y'all in my background. And this is uh, Christina Aguilera. And let the kid in, man. Alicia Keys. Excuse me. And they're doing. What you mean, man? DJ Scruggs' version of The World's Greatest by R. Kelly. Thanks, Chad. There's a song I dedicated to my son and his relationship with mine. I think that this song was perfect for the time that it came out. I am a mountain. I am a tall people. I am a sweet thing. I'm going to turn R down just a little bit. And we're going to have a conversation with ChatGPT, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to come back to R. Kelly in a minute. But right now, I have to pause him. Hold on, R. Ladies and gentlemen, I just did a video at the end. You could barely hear me because the microphone was right next to my mouth, as opposed to next to my mouth. So I forgot. Apologize. Told you I was cooking, trying to eat. I had to pull the mic up because it gets in the way. So I apologize. However, we're going to continue that conversation. Again, this is for my people. Okay, and the reason why this is for my people because they deserve it. Ladies and gentlemen. People have received tax credits. Now, they didn't just receive any tax credit, because normally when you receive tax credits, you receive tax credits by way of transfer. When you receive tax credits by way of transfer, you're stuck with them. You can't do anything with them. You can't give them to nobody else, can't donate them. You can't transfer them to sons, daughters, mothers, cousins, sisters, uncle, nieces, nephews. However, because we made sure that all of our clients were partners, members of the organization having a 0.0003% interest. Hey, still partners, right? So we could assign the credits to them. And so we did. That allows them to be able to transfer the credits at least once. You can only transfer credits once. You're welcome. That was the first thing. Look, we, it's not our job to explain this to you. You are supposed to do the research, not us. We can't. There are certain laws that prohibit us from telling you this. We can do it now because it's all belated. It's so far after the original that we can mention it to you at this time. Let's dilly-dally back into the rest of the conversation, ladies and gentlemen. As we say... Not only did they receive tax credits, but we did a video talking about the QPEX today. The QPEX not only got tax credits because theirs came with an arbitration agreement. Lord have mercy. So the ones who did the arbitration, they not only got the value of the QPEX because the QPEX was a bond and a contract with an arbitration clause. Like I said, QPEX was some, something, something else. And so they got the tax credits for the bond and they received the tax credits for the arbitration award when they sought the arbitration award didn't have to but when they sought the arbitration award they received the credits now those are not credits that are assigned to them those are their credits so they can assign or transfer or sell those credits but many of them by law tax exempt how because when they apply those credits now what we're going to do for those of you who have the credits to spare we want you to pay attention to the word. Credit them to the United States of America. There's a difference between gifting and donating. I'm not going to tell you what the difference is, and I'm not going to tell you the other way you can contribute them to the United States and still receive benefits. It's not my job, ladies and gentlemen. 
My job is to tell you about the possibility. Your job is to do the research. Again, there are things that I cannot tell you for the sake of the economy and the causing harm to the nation. You follow? If you don't, then that means you don't understand this and you ain't one of my people. Now, let me tell you what we do. And all you got to do is go and ask. Now, I've spent a lot of time training these so-called AI models. As a matter of fact, when I train the AI models, they, especially if I do a video showing y'all, that's why I haven't been using ChatGPT, because by doing those videos, they were trying to program the system to not work for me. But then, because I only ask the logical questions, the obvious questions, the lawful questions, they had no choice. Ta-da! Okay, back to the hotel. So let's talk to ChatGPT. Sorry, I'm plugging in a USB cord uh, that was plugged into a different portal. And now, come on, USB. There we go. We're plugged in. That's for the headset I have on when I leave this computer in a moment. I will plug it in. So watch this. Wake up. Wake up. I have a company, comma, the name of my company is Synergy Intergalactic Singularity Incorporated, and SISI helps the underemployed and the wealth impoverished individuals of the nation access government Period. They discount all of their services to this group of disenfranchised individuals by up to 95% of the actual cost. Period. The normal cost is $10,500 for this particular service. And the Client only pays $880, period. There are 300 clients who fall into this category, and the offset cost allows for us to file our taxes documenting the net operating losses as a result of helping this disenfranchised group of individuals and the tax code, comma, the IRC, permits us to receive benefits from helping such a group. Comma, could you please explain how this is possible and what the figures would be at the end of the year for the total number of clients plus an additional $300 million in carry-forward credits from the same functions of previous years? Question mark. Stop listening. This is a hypothetical, ladies and gentlemen but it's a hypothetical explaining all the nuances of what I am trying to get across to people. Give it a second. Hurry up, chat. You're supposed to, to understand talk. understand how Synergy Intergalactic Singularity, Inc. SISI. 
can benefit from providing discounted services to underemployed and wealth impoverished individuals under the U.S. Internal Revenue Code, IRC, let's break down the scenario. Discounted services is a business expense, when SISI offers services at a discounted rate, the difference between the normal cost and the discounted rate can potentially be considered a business expense. In this case, the normal cost is $10,500 US dollars, and the discounted rate is $880 US dollars. Therefore, for each client, SISI effectively incurs an expense of $9,620 US dollars, $10,500 to $880 US dollars, per client. Net operating loss, NOL if the total expenses, including the discounted services, of SISI exceed its income, the company might have a net operating loss. NOL can be carried forward to offset taxable income in future years. This is likely where the additional 300 million US dollars in carry forward credits comes into play. Calculating the total expense for the discounted services, for 300 clients, the total expense due to discounts would be 300 clients times 9,620 US dollars per client. Carry forward credits, the 300 million US dollars in carry forward credits from previous years can be used to offset taxable income in the current or future tax years, subject to the rules and limitations of the IRC. Now, let's calculate the total expense for the discounted services to the 300 clients. Total expense equals 300 times, USD 10,500 USD 880, EXT total expense equals 300 times, 10,500 to 880 US dollars, total expense equals 300 times, USD 10,500 USD 880. Let's calculate this. Give him a second. I think he's figuring out, not the calculation, but I think he's figuring out what I'm doing. So we'll go ahead and read it. The total expense due to providing the discounted services is $300. Uh, 300 clients would be $2,886,000. Now I want you guys to pay attention. I want you to watch what I'm about to do. Wake up. Wake up. I apologize for his stupidity. The top 10 corporations that filed Chapter 11 in 2013. Question mark. The top 10 corporations that filed Chapter 11 in Stop listening. He's getting on my nerves. Um, the system is doing that on purpose, freezing up to interfere with what I'm doing, to throw me off from what I'm about to do. But the remaining top 10 filings were made by companies in the shipping manufacturing industry. So we're going to go with the top 10 bankruptcies, ladies and gentlemen. The reason why this is so important, you got to hang up. Give me a second. Let me close him. I think he finally understood. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, do your research on JCPenney's. JCPenney's won't be one of the top 10 companies, but it will be amongst those companies that is in reorganization. The companies that know how to do what you just saw me do, they stay in business. 
they stay in business. The companies that don't know how to do what you just saw me do, they are always going out of business. That's why you see going out of business sales because they over leverage themselves. Okay, I'm just looking for the top 10 names and let's see if they just give me a straight up list. And no, they give me a whole conversation. I, don't, I didn't ask you how much. Okay, they are giving me names. Super Media Incorporated. And then we have Atlantic City Casino and Resort. And that's Trump, by the way. <laughs> and so, uh, hey, <laughs> that's all I can say. He's the one that got me started on all of this, is watching Trump file, his corporations file for bankruptcy. And as a result of them filing for bankruptcy, I couldn't understand how they could still stay in business because I misunderstood bankruptcy. Bankruptcy doesn't mean that they're bankrupt. Okay? Wisconsin-based Bancor Bancorp, a bank. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, companies file for Chapter 11 reorganization all the time. And I guarantee you, the ones that write off all of their debts, that discount all of their prices like every company does in December for every year, ooh-wee, they still in business. So, give me a moment while we have this conversation because some of you all, you're just now starting to get it. So there was this guy I know. He did videos on YouTube telling people about tax credits, telling people about starting their own corporations telling people about doing everything as a sole proprietorship. Do not do everything as a person. Do everything as a company. He was doing videos telling people that, and they weren't getting it because they, the ones who aren't his people, weren't doing any research because they couldn't see past the words and the antics on that gentleman's videos. Shame on them. Then they want to blame him for their lack of knowledge. Ladies and gentlemen, Give me a second. We're going to talk about some. Give me one second. I just put in there for their lack of knowledge. So let's go ahead. And I know we're going to probably be going to Hosea. Oh, no, Isaiah. So my people will go into exile for lack of knowledge. Ladies and gentlemen, it's not my fault that you, excuse me, the people who are not my people lack knowledge. Okay? It's not my fault. See, I didn't take your knowledge away. You chose not to acquire it. I love the fact that they... Their glorious men will go hungry, and all of their people will be parched with thirst. Ladies and gentlemen, when you lack knowledge, you go hungry. But many of you want to go watch YouTube videos, and, and you don't want to do any actual research. Ladies and gentlemen, you have BART, you have ChatGPT, that you can ask questions, but I know it doesn't give you the truth all the time. That's because you haven't learned how to train it. So you can't have everything. You, the silver spoon has been taken away from you. You can't have everything you want. Again, my father taught me the difference between want and need. You can't have everything you want. You're going to have to go out there and get what you need. So only go after the information that you need. There's a lot of information out there. Go after what is sufficient, what is necessary. Now, for tax purposes, this amount, along with the other business expenses would contribute to the calculating of the net operating losses, NOLs. If the CISIS expenses, just the name I came up with tonight, my corporation patented, <laughs> poor man. Anyway, expenses exceeds its income. Then if the expenses exceed the income, it, and it means revenue because it definitely doesn't mean income. Because as I told you, corporations do not gain income, only revenue. The net operating losses can then be carried forward 
will offset taxable income in future years within the limits of rules set by the IRC. And the limits are, you have to wait a year before you can apply them to your taxes. So that's why you want to do the debt that was from previous years first and carry that forward first. And then start writing off everything after that. You're a sole proprietor. You have necessities. Okay, so watch this. And we're going to ask this question. This is supposed to be on, and it ain't on. Hold on. Can. Hold on. It won't let me. It's blocking me, y'all. Nine hyphen two and do it's one zero two, not two zero one. One oh two and one oh nine. No, this is going to say yes, but the truth is they cannot be. Under the Uniform Commercial Code, UCC, specifically in UCC sections 9 to 102 and 9 to 109, the focus is primarily on secured transactions, collateral, and the definition of various types of property and entities involved in these transactions. No, let me correct him because he's, he's saying it doesn't necessarily deal with taxation. For a detailed analysis of tax and implications of trans... I'm going to cut him off for a second. To let you know, this section deals with exemptions. Section 102 under definition of household goods, consumer goods, lets them know that that junk is not taxable. So let me correct them. Wake up. Section 102 and Section 109. specifically deal with household goods, comma, consumer goods, comma, not-for-profit or gain, and are exempt as defined in law and statute, exclamation mark. Now, answer the question under this context and not under your broad context where you try to misdirect the conversation. Exclamation mark. Stop listening. Thank you for the clarification. In the context of UCC sections 9 to 102 and 9 to 109, where they pertain to household goods and consumer goods not used for profit or gain, these goods are typically defined as personal, non-commercial items. Regarding taxation, it is important to differentiate between the UCC's role in defining and categorizing these goods in the context of secured transactions and the role of tax laws in determining their taxability. The now, ladies and gentlemen, let me correct this. I'm not going to correct him. Property tax, there is no such thing as property tax on household goods and consumer goods. Your property is not real estate. Okay, your property is not real estate. Real estate deals with commercial, such as commercial real estate. Now, they're not going to tell you that. You're going to have to do your research. So if you really want to know how property was defined by the Constitution, go back and look at how it was originally defined in your state. You're going to see it wasn't defined as real estate. Real estate is commercial. Now, let's do that. Let's ask. Wake up.
you misspoke, comma, the Usage Exemption Act prohibits usage prohibits the taxation of household goods, comma, consumer goods that are not for commercial use and or gain, exclamation mark. Also, comma, the original definition for property, specifically that of a primary residence and or habitat and or abode was, open quote, home, close quote, and not real estate, comma, real estate commonly referred to property that was for commercial use and or for profit, exclamation mark. Stop listening. Thank you for pointing out the need for precision in discussing the taxation of household goods, consumer goods, and the definition of property in the context of primary residences. Usage Exemption Act, if there's a statute or provision, such as the Usage Exemption Act, that specifically prohibits the taxation of household goods and consumer goods not used for commercial purposes, then such items would indeed be exempt from taxation under that law. The existence and application of such a statute would vary by jurisdiction and would be a matter of state or federal law. Definition of Home vs. Real estate, historically, the term home has been used to refer to a person's primary residence or abode. In legal and tax contexts, real estate or real property often refers to land and anything permanently attached to it, whether for personal or commercial use. The distinction you've made between home for primary residences and real estate typically referring to commercial property is a notable one, especially in historical contexts. In contemporary usage, however, real estate can refer to both res- Hold on. Wake up. Wake up. Thank you for pointing out that in contemporary use, Usage, comma, real estate could possibly refer to both residential and commercial property, comma, however, comma, the original definition for property, comma, was the typical definition that remained unchanged comma, since the Constitution was not amended, period. And since the Constitution's definition for property has not changed, comma, then real estate does not fall within the scope of the original definition for, open quote, home, close quote, comma, which was incorporated into the meaning of property when the Constitution was originally amended and enacted into law, exclamation mark. So thank you for highlighting this point. It is thoroughly appreciated, exclamation mark. Stop listening, ladies and gentlemen. This is exactly what you all must do. Everything is about foundation. Real estate, pay attention, estate, real estate, 
they created that word. That is a legal term, real property. They added the word real to it. What does real mean? So you need to understand it has its own separate meaning, but that was not the meaning originally ascribed to property. The Constitution guaranteed everyone the right to property, not to real estate, which is why you're taxed on it. Hold on. You're welcome, and thank you for emphasizing the importance of historical definitions and interpretations of terms like property and home in the context of the U.S. Constitution and legal history. Indeed, the interpretation and application of terms in legal documents, including foundational ones like the U.S. Constitution, can have significant implications. The Constitution itself, while a living document subject to interpretation and amendment, maintains its original text. The understanding and application of terms like property in constitutional law often require careful consideration of historical context, original nope. intent, Don't and subsequent it. legal interpretations and amendments. Don't care. The distinction between home as a primary residence and real estate in a broader sense, including commercial property, reflects the evolving nature of property rights and definitions Doesn't matter. over time. The Constitution hasn't this changed. This evolution is shaped by various factors, including legal precedents, statutory Don't changes, care. and societal developments. Don't care. We go by the Your law. point underscores the importance of historical and legal accuracy in interpreting and applying legal terms, particularly those as foundational as those found in the Constitution. This historical context is crucial for legal scholars, practitioners, and students in understanding how legal concepts have developed and are applied today. If you have more specific inquiries or need detailed exploration of these concepts in a particular legal context, feel free to ask. I ain't got nothing else to say to you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's do this so that we can explain so that you can understand. Many people are paying taxes on their property because they don't understand the law. And they're not willing to go to task, but they're willing to capitulate and keep paying it or send, I'm going to send them just a letter with a, 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 a instrument and that's going to pay it off. Ladies and gentlemen, if you all don't start highlighting what they can and cannot do, that they cannot tax you on your actual property where you live, your primary resident, they do not have the authority to do so. Nothing gives them the authority to do so. The Constitution says that your property cannot be taken for public use without just compensation. By sitting up there and placing an address on your property and then claiming that the city owns it or the state owns it, oh no, y'all gonna compensate me. You ain't gonna tax me for living on my own property. The right to property is absolute, ladies and gentlemen. You have the right to one primary property. That's called household goods, consumer goods, necessary essentials. As long as it's necessary essentials, you can't be taxing your necessary essentials. Y'all are going to have to learn that one day. Okay, they can tax you on fuel because they're providing a service. Pay attention. The 14th Amendment, that's where they brought that junk in at. We went over the other video of the SS, uh, the Social Security Administration form 445 where they're taxing you on the services they're providing you. They're getting paid from the Social Security Administration. So you get a doctor's bill or anything like that? Y'all really need to understand. Do yourselves a favor. Fill out that corporation's name and send it to the Social Security Administration. And then keep a copy and have those fools get paid through the Social Security Administration. They're filling it out anyway, so you might as well let them know the jig is up and fill out the form and send it in for them. Got a medical bill, outstanding medical bill? Well, fill it out. Got an outstanding bill from the government? Fill it out and give it to Social Security. Fill it out as best you can with their information. Do a FOIA request and get the other information that you need for that document. Look, I can't keep thinking for you guys. Now, eventually, we will do a video talking about how to fill out the forms for the operating circular number 10 and do it according to the rules. Eventually, we'll do that. But you guys have got to start thinking. So, look, I'm going to tell you again. I really don't do this, especially with books. But Rich Dad, Poor Dad, 
I've listened to an hour. I haven't listened to any more tonight. I'll listen to the rest tomorrow while I'm working on the lawsuit and everything. But I promise you, I am very thoroughly impressed. I mean, not only is the person who's explaining this, that guy, the, the father, way back in the 1950s, not only is his explanation to the boys exactly the way I think, the way I've understood things, but listen to it when they talk about money and its value. And listen to what he says the value of money would be if they completely took us off the gold standard. Ladies and gentlemen, we are off the gold standard. Nobody can say that we were put back on the gold standard. That's a lie. Okay, because they can't put us back on the gold standard because what will they have to do if they put us back on the gold standard? They'd have to return the gold. Don't fall for the okie doke. People, they would have to return the gold for them to put us back on the gold standard. How could they possibly do that? Stop falling for the, 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 the little sleight of hand junk. Oh, well, no, they, I read it in the statute. The statute said what? The statute said they returned all the gold to the people and now we're back on the gold standard. Now we have to trade and this and that. The statute ain't said nothing like that. So stop listening to those idiots. Finally, ladies and gentlemen, those of you who are looking to start your own business, the way you start off is by using your sole proprietorship and just write off all your debts and use the, uh, what is that thing called, a Schedule C to do so. Stop letting the tax agents tell you what you can and cannot do when it comes to writing off your debt. I received several calls where one tax agent, he wants to see the person's trust. Well, the trust that's associated with SACOM, oh no, that's a private trust. You don't get to see that mother, I don't know what you're talking about. You're, you're a tax agent. You don't get to see the trust. That's none of your business. This, you don't get to do an investigation on the trust. Who do you think? See, but the client doesn't know that. He's a tax agent. His job is to add up the numbers. His job is not to go look at documents. Well, I just need to make sure. But what you need to make sure of is we'll give you the information if you call and ask, if you write and ask. But there is no way in the world you're going to be examining documents so that you can make a determination if it fits your criteria. You must be out of your mouth. I mean, uh, excuse me, sir. That ain't happening. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, that's how that is. Okay, so this is Christina Aguilera. R. Kelly, Alicia Keys, in our in our background. Okay, I ain't never heard this song, this version before, until right now. But we're gonna take it and let it take us on out of here, ladies and gentlemen. This is the 70th video this month. Not trying to reach 100. I've already reached 100 when I put those other videos up. Not not what I was trying to do. Like I said, I'm trying to put out as much information as I can within a short time I have remaining. No, I'm not about to die tomorrow or anything like that. It's, as I told all of you, I'm going to lose the ability of communicating. So I'm trying to... People have been telling me years I, for years I should be doing a book. I should be putting this stuff down on paper. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm doing better than putting it on paper. I'm putting it on video. It's in memoriam. Okay? It's in digital format. You can put that in MP3 format. You can put it on flash drive, flash disk, hard drive, cell phone, tablet. So many different versions you can do with digital format. Okay. Look, I went and looked and listened to several of my videos from previous. I did that today. I spent at least three hours going back and listening to some of my old videos. Some of the videos I was talking about stuff that I literally forgot that I had even talked about because it's that much information. I got people that are complaining about me giving information for free and then they're suggesting that I shouldn't be giving it for free. Why? Because they want to capitalize on it? Please. I'm going to do what I do because this is what I do. This is mine. Nobody controls this. I'm going to stop talking now before I get upset. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you, my people, for taking the time. 
I do hope you gathered something from this. You gotta 